just in on a Sunday finishing up the wiring for the main dash panel on one of the Series 2 Land Rover builds we're doing. So we take the, I guess, you know, the original dash uh, and replace most everything. Some of that is with original things because we'd love to, you know, the, the click of these original switches is fantastic. That sound is awesome. And the feel is great too. And I, like personally, I just love the, love it when you use a very old fashioned physical switch to interact with digital things. Now, I guess it's not interacting with the screen or anything, but it is sending a signal back to the motor controller or the PDM or one of the other electronic devices we have in the car. You can see we use speed hut gauges. I've talked about this in dashboard design videos before. So a, uh, a speedometer, of course, recreated uh, typefaces and everything to match the original Land Rover style. This is, a, uh, I guess, a, a, a digital speedometer connected to a sensor, which we adapt into the original transfer case. Um, so we, you know, take the little spinning element out of that, adapt it to a, a digital signal and send it into this. Uh, GPS is really easy, but is illegal in Australia. So you can go and buy them at the shops. It's, you know, legal to buy them. It's just kind of illegal to fit them because then, you know, if you're going through a tunnel, you can get signal drop out or whatever. So great product, works awesomely, but no engineer would sign off on that. So digital signal, and that, that's fine. This works really well also. Um, just a little bit more wiring. And then a amp meter. So we, you know, having, having gauges on the screen, you kind of want them to do something. The thing about, uh, you know, the electric motors is that the temperature doesn't fluctuate. Our motor controller sits at like 35 degrees. The motor kind of gets to its operating temperature um, just a bit under 100 degrees, and it kind of sits there. There's not much going on. And we've got warning lights if, if they were to go over temp. So what is fun is having something that, I guess, does something. So we have a, an amp draw meter, and this shows, sits at zero, uh, obviously when you're stopped, and then goes down to 200 amps of regen and up to theoretically 600 amps of uh, input. So when you put your foot down, you're going to be drawing amps. When you back off and you're slowing down, you're putting amps back into, into the batteries. So this is always fluctuating depending on how you're driving. And I guess you can use it as a bit of an economy gauge as well. Um, you'll notice that when you change gears, you drop back, um, you know, a few amps because uh, the motor's running it more efficiently. The other stuff we've got on here, uh, you know, headlight switch, um, a regen brake switch, so regen on or off. Uh, when it's on, the blue light is on. We have a demister, uh, so just coming out the, you know, just under the windscreen there. We install a spotlight switch or a light bar switch on every build, have it all wired up. Whether you install that or not is up to you, but it's pre-wired for that kind of thing. The main, I guess, you know, the on light for the vehicle. Uh, traditional key barrel with a little uh, spring across to the lightning bolt that turns it on. Uh, a hazard and a cabin light. Um, these cars didn't necessarily you know, come with hazard lights or they didn't come with dome lights at all inside the car. So the dome light button, all these kinds of things. Um, and a little, uh, another, I guess, status light. Uh, it's actually a 12 volt warning light. So it's like a 12 volt system warning light that might come on, but it's a nice, uh, often the Land Rover's had, a, had another additional hole here. Um, so it fills a hole uh, and does serve a function in very rare circumstances. On the back, um, and I guess if I cut to the uh, time lapse of me building this, you'll see that uh, I just wanted to show you it before we tape it all up and you you know lose all these colours. Essentially, these three plugs uh, plug into the the loom that comes in. Um, you've got one for all the switches and buttons. You've got one for the gauges, so the signal and the lighting to the gauges, and then one for the ignition. We basically use Deutsch. DTM for everything uh, as much as we can. Really nice to work with with human hands as opposed to um, a dedicated crimping machine. And a, a, yeah, just a really uh, well thought out, easy to work with, um, very reliable is not the right word, but you have a very consistent crimping ability. Um, so very minimal wastage, all that kind of stuff. The, as we, you know, as I've talked about in the videos around PDMs, this is all going, uh, basically all our switches switch to ground. So we have a, you know, say for example, this plug is 12 pin plug. We've got one ground wire that is 
connected to one side of basically every switch here. And all we're getting in return is, you know, what every colored wire is the signal return or the, I guess the ground return. So the PDM is just listening for each of these to be triggered and pulled to ground. That's a little bit different to the way these were wired once before, where often the current would be coming. So the main power would be coming out of the fuse box from the battery to the fuse box into this switch, out of this switch, and then say, for example, into the headlights. Um, this is a lot safer, I guess, in terms of, uh, and a lot more reliable. You're not really running any current through these switches. They're just triggering the ground. So they're just pulling each, when you flick that switch, it just pulls it to ground. So it's just a minimal, minimal signal and the PDM can detect that. Uh, there is a few, obviously, variations where we're running lights and things like that. So we've got like a, you know, an output, but where possible, we're just pulling switches to ground and minimizes the wiring too. We build these as, you know, and everything as kind of a sub-assembly. So this whole dash unit, you know, you can still unplug every, um, I guess, bit of hardware, every switch, every gauge individually. Uh, you know, you might need to do a little bit of unwrapping, the, but that would be very uncommon. Um, but to install, it's just plug these three plugs in, uh, all different size, shape, you know, different number of pins, basically. So you can't plug them in wrong. Some things have got to be uh, double-sided taped here. There's certain things that we do, like um, that's the... That's the brightness of the gauges, the dials. So these come, you can light up the needle separately from the, uh, I guess, main information around the edges and the backlight, I guess, of the main dial. But to be honest, you always want those things coming on at the same time. And like most modern vehicles, it's actually more legible if you just have that light on all the time. So it's not triggered by uh, turning your headlights on the backlight for the gauges is always on. Maybe you don't really notice it that much um, during the day, but it does actually provide a little bit more legibility and a little bit more contrast to these. So it's just always on. Um, you can adjust the brightness if you want, um, but we don't make it really a user accessible thing. It's a, a customization from factory, I guess, or if you want to undo the, what is it? Five, five little bolts that hold the whole dashboard on. Um, so I'm just about to, I'll just wrap this up with this uh, sort of soft tape. It's an anti-rattle tape, um, which you, you want to avoid as many. There's enough rattles in these old vehicles anyway, and you hear all of them. So uh, as many as you could avoid in the dashboard, the better. So we do all, uh, you know, anti-rattle tape, fabric tape around all of this. Uh, and then that is ready to go and plug into the loom.